So rhetoric aside, could we actually be winning the trade war? And if so, what are the best stocks and sectors to bet on right now? Pete. I think we could be winning the trade war. And I think if you decide that you want to look at the Shanghai versus the U.S. in terms of the stock markets themselves, that sort of screams that we are winning because essentially we're flat over the last month. And you look over at Shanghai and it's down about 10 percent over the last month. So under the circumstances, it seems like people are able to digest and look forward and look forward enough that whether you call it a trade war negotiation, whatever you want to call this whole thing that's going back and forth and all these various tariffs, it seems to me that we are in the position of power. Now, I know there's others that might disagree with that, but I think we are in a position where we do have the power. And I think because of that, that's why we're seeing the financials today finally showed a little bit of life. We got earnings at the end of the week. We're going to see the numbers. We'll find out more about that. But these industrials, I think that that is an opportunity. And I think some of them that were oversold are starting to get a little bit of that lift. And I think there's a lot further to go. I know you're talking about Caterpillar and Boeing. I, I mean, we saw a nice performance in today's session. Do we get the all clear when it comes to these poster children well, of the trade war? I mean, I'm not sure it's a position of power, though, Pete. I mean, you know, if you look to see what Boeing's down 8 percent, Caterpillar's down 12 percent, that's with a rally over the last couple of days. So I mean, the point is, over the last couple of days, are we making the call that we're now winning the war because in a lot of these stocks have bounced back? I think what we're happening is, what we're realizing is, the trade war is not a war anyone is going to win. A negotiated settlement, I, I, I probably believe the same thing with Pete. I, I think we're in a position to actually exact a negotiated settlement that's probably uh, positive in trade terms. No matter what, though, we've listened to CEOs around the world and definitely ones in this country telling you we don't want a trade war. And if you look at the big industrial companies, they've underperformed during this period. The rest of the world is sold off like they're going out of business. And yes, that's an opportunity. Well, here's the thing, right? So you talk about who's got the upper hand here. I would say given the proximity to the midterm elections, I'd say the Chinese in particular have the upper hand right here. They cannot have, the Republicans cannot afford to have this thing drag out. And they certainly, most of the Republicans um, do not, agree with the Trump, with, with Trump's tariffs. They just don't. So I think that because they don't want it to be well, fair. Think, yeah, but they don't no, want no, this. No, 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 no. Hold on, Pete. Listen, everyone agrees that the intellectual property, the, the things that are going on there right. needs to change. They're not. Right. They just don't agree with how it's going about. OK, so all of a sudden now we have a situation where we slap thirty four billion dollars of tariffs, 25 percent tariffs on that. OK, so that's ten billion inconsequential. Dollars. Inconsequential. It really is. On a Let's 19 trillion dollar right. economy, right. it's inconsequential. inconsequential. All right. But then he's tagging possibly five hundred Billion. You which do is the math on everything that. Everything we bring in which from is China more. for the United States. But, 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 I mean, he's come up well, with numbers that are even more I, than I, we. But, but I understand. For. And so I, I guess my point is, is like this thing's going to go on. There's not going to be any quick resolution to this sort of thing. And that's the whole notion of a trade skirmish that turns into a trade war. And let me just add one other thing. Yeah. It's not just our economic and, and, and political adversaries. It's also our allies. We trade more with the U.K., China, or excuse me, the, the UK, uh, or, or excuse me, Mexico and Canada yeah. more than China, Japan, the UK, and Germany. Okay, one trillion more with them. And we're launching a trade war with them too, our, our, our allies? Yeah, but I, I, and Dan, I, I agree with you. I think the issue here is that the market's got its head around the fact that when Trump throws out, President Trump throws out a number like 500 billion, yeah. that's not going to get passed. I mean, not even close to that getting passed. So I think the. Why? The market, if they keep retaliating, David? I, no, I, I, look, I think I agree with you about China. I agree with you about China. I think China actually is in control because if they start to see a sag in their economy, we're never going to know the real story. We're going to see numbers come out. We're going to see a, a sort of face that they're going to put on. Growth at any cost is their mantra. That continues to be sort of a reality. So as far as the information and the numbers coming from China, do I actually believe them on a week to week? Well, hold on, is, are we now, are we I now, I mean, I, so, that's, no, a, look, that's, I think a, that's the, something that's something we've heard for years. Correct. Dave, I mean, and that's I think the wrong but, but my, thing to be my, bringing my up here. My point is supporting, supporting Dan on this and saying they have the upper hand from it because they kind of do when it comes to that. When it comes to sort of the illusion that they could put out there and the impact of their economy. So what are we seeing economy. in the markets here? Right now, the, the markets right now are comfortable. We're seeing I think the markets are comfortable, A, over the weekend that we didn't get any, any, any sort of rhetoric around trade what's you know whatsoever but i think most importantly right now the comfort is around the fact that trump isn't going to impose these crazy outlandish tariffs that he's threatening to i think Look, the, the market the, believes why that. do you say the, that the, if the, you took his policy on almost everything though think about t tpp think about iran think about immigration I'll tell you think why. about health care what they want to do think no, about no, taxes no, no, they've actually followed through on all of this but, but, stuff but i'll tell you all why. of the because once stuff, the economy the once the economy starts to take a hit and growth begin, begins to slow down to some extent based on this rhetoric that's when he backs off so aggressively. There's a Trump because put. There's a there's point a Trump in the put trade war. He, again, I said this before uh -huh. on the show a million times. We basically have an administration right now is benchmarked on the S&P. 
They're benchmarked on the Look, S&P. I, 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 the if you story. want to make an argument that we actually saw a reacceleration of risk aggression or, or whatever you want to call this uh, four or five days ago, that's really where this is, is started. And, and what's the reason for it? One, I think you've got a Fed out of the way. You've got Fed minutes that reaffirm that this is a Fed that's being very thoughtful, I think, on both sides of the ledger, this asymmetric you know, target on, on uh, PCE, et cetera. But again, over the last four or five days, you've had emerging markets rally 6%. You've had the dollar fail at 95 and actually trade with a 93 handle this morning. Rates are sideways for three months. Look at the two-year note, which was really leading the entire move on rates. And actually, that's done nothing since mid-April. That's the story, folks. And a lot of this stuff, I think, is oversold. Here's the other part of the story. Especially as we get into earnings season. How about the fact that volatility, 20% has been sucked out in the last four or five trading cycles? You think cycles? that's been a good indicator throughout I think it's been a fantastic really? indicator. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, without any so, question. So wouldn't it be time now I, I mean, to buy look, protection? Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. The VIX with yes. below a 13 Because handle. we were in a different range. We had moved from that right. range, which we call it 10 to 12. And then suddenly we were in this 14 to 17 range. And now here we are back in the 13s and towards but the 12s. Does it worry you guys that in January into Q4 earnings season and then in April into uh, Q1 earnings season or after, we had pretty healthy sell-offs after there because we had these moves into earnings. Like, listen, guys, we're sitting here trying to tell, I think tell the viewers that was why the, the market rallied today. I have no idea. None of you guys have any idea. It's head-scratching, okay? So here's the thing. As we get I, into... I, I actually, I disagree. I think I, I, yeah, I, 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 and it's the emerging markets. It's the loose thing over the last week. That's why we're up today. It's lack of any sort of... That's That's fine. No, it's not. It's not literally. No, but think think about where we are. All right, in the last couple of days, we actually got through the formal event where we actually filed these investigations. We had to do it. It's procedural, guys. At this point, you've got 34 billion. You've got another 16 behind it, and that's probably it. Uh, you've got 270 days to go into this investigation, and you've had the Fed out of the way. You've had good data. I could go on for a long time. Here's the question: Do we invest as if this trade war is either behind us or or we're on the winning side of it? Whichever way you want to view it. I mean, when you take a look at a name like. I'll give this one to you. General Motors mm -hmm. theoretically could really be hit. It, they, they certainly could, and that would be concerning because I'm a, an owner of the stock itself. Yeah. But, um, you know, Mel, I, I continue to look at it as I think we are in a winning position. Does that mean that every day that I think GM's got a shot to continue to kind of grind and maybe move, move to the upside and get past 40, get back out towards 44, 45? No. But at the same time, I do feel like we're in a position of power. I do feel like we're the stronger. And I think that's reflected in what we're seeing in the market and why people have chose to come back into some of these names, particularly as we approach earnings season. I mean, that's right. really kicking off Friday that's when right. we get into the earnings financials. Let's talk about earnings season. Sure. Okay, let's talk about the weirdoness of all these tariffs. You just read this story this morning that BMW has these plants in our southern part of our country, and they make cars and they sell them to China. Now, China's going to slap a 40% tariffs on that. Okay, so even Either they either need to raise prices or they need to, because there's going to be lesser demand. Like right. so we can all right. agree on that, right. right? And then ultimately, they're going to have to fire workers in Trump country. How do you think that's going to play? How do you think that's going to play? These are the sorts of things that we are going to hear, the uncertainty that we are going to hear about second half guidance. Right. And if you don't think that that's going to take some of the air out of the first half excitement no, that we I had think... about tax cuts... I, I just don't see it. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, like, I think it's a good point. I think what you have to focus on right now is CapEx and, and guidance, CapEx guidance, and the way companies position themselves from that perspective for, the, for looking forward. But don't you think I would, it'll be cautious? So CapEx it, will be cautious? We'll, we'll Hiring see, will be cautious? We, we will Wage see, growth we will, will be cautious? see how that is. And it probably is a tempered tone. But I would say, if you think about the market in general right now, this is how I'm investing. What's the path of least resistance right now in this market? market? Up or down? It's Doesn't up, the it's market, up to haven't us. they heard from every company that were concerned about this? And the market is priced in everything you just said, Dan. Wait, wait, I mean, you right. can't Tim, tell me Tim, that that's not already out we there. We sold off after Q1 earnings I, I, season. I, I in know April what the history was. You just said because we thought that, that was a top in earnings. earnings. And that I'm telling you, earnings. everything you just said about the guidance about CapEx or whatever they think from the trade concerns. So Mel asked, how are you investing in it? I think it makes sense to take a week or two. Take a week or two. The market's so range bound. I mean, the S and P. How you just know. don't do anything. For well, no, I, I don't mean don't do anything. If you're, you know, if you're like Pete and you see opportunities, yeah, GM went up to 45 right. and now it's back at 40, and it He's filled selected. in that whole gap. Maybe it's a good do. You All know right. what I mean?
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.